Hello and welcome to the Rip Roarin' Rootin' Tootin' culmination video in my Magical Melody 100 Days series. This video will cover absolutely everything left to do in the game, which honestly isn't all that much. The only real question is, will I be able to perfect the game in 300 days? Well, you'll just have to watch the entire video to find out. But before we get to day 201, I thought I'd just let you know that these videos take a lot of time and effort to make. So, hitting that subscribe button and enabling notifications is a great way to let me know that you love this type of content. Also, it would be super great if you could help me exploit the YouTube algorithm by telling me what your favorite Pokemon is in the comment section and smashing the like button. All right, let's get into those next 100 days. I settle back into Flowerbud Village on day 201 by giving my beloved wife Gwen a carrot then collecting some pumpkins left over from the last 200 days. I need to get started on befriending the village animals, so I give a squirrel some weeds and then grab some milk from Benny. I finally got enough heart levels with Saibara, so I run into his little workshop and get a cutscene where he gifts me the mixing pot, the final kitchen appliance, and the last item I need to get my 95th music note, the art note. My first day back on the farm ends by re some carrot seeds by the big house. I wake up on day 202 with a letter from Liz teaching me how to seduce women. Apparently strawberries, pumpkins, and yams are favorite gifts among the town ladies. It wouldn't be a farming game if you didn't spend an exorbitant amount of time watering crops. So I do that, then grab an egg down at the coop before cooking it up in the pan. Lila has some new items in stock, so I had to purchase those. And then I went down to Duke's bar, where he teaches me how to make apple soda now that I have the aging pot. Day 202 is put to bed as I collect those yams that Liz loves so much. I completely forgot to put something in the town square box yesterday, so day 203 begins on a sour note as the harvest festival has been canceled. As today was supposed to be a festival day, I can't do much gifting without any of the villagers around. So I water my crops, take care of my animals, and then hit the sack early. Day 204 begins by upsetting everyone in town by polluting, then making some money by selling off some peppers and eggplants. I decided it's time to start training my horses, so I give Kuze a nice trot around town before gifting Duke his daily block of butter. I don't know how many things of butter I've given him, but I guess this was the one to finally get him to full heart levels. Maybe he'll let me drink for free at the bar now. I ended an eventful day 204, by collecting some delicious bell peppers at the river farm. My large animals are looking a little scruffy, so I give them a nice brush in the morning of day 205. Kuze gets to stretch his legs in the rain, then it's gift giving time. Martha gets some wool, Dan gets some cheese, and Ray gets an egg. Spinach is finally ready for harvest, so I end the day by getting all those leafy greens plucked out of the dirt. Even in a video game, I'm addicted to the television. Thankfully, my addiction pays off on day 206 since the mayor is on the Seasons channel reminding me to put a pumpkin in the town square shipping bin for the upcoming festival. I get the not-so-ripe pumpkins watered, do my daily weeding, and then make sure my birds are well-fed before taking Kuze out for a ride in the mountains. Since it's Ray's birthday, I give him a special egg, and Lewis receives a pepper, the final gift I needed to give him for Max affection. I finish off the day by watering and collecting some ripe crops at the river house, and then tossing some leftovers into the shipping bin for some extra money. The morning of day 207, I got a letter from Ray. I'm already a true fisherman, Ray. You don't need to tell me all about the fishing spots. I know them all. I caught all the fish. Today I learned that Dan really loves rubies, and then I gave Henry a carrot. This special little carrot got Henry to 10 out of 10 hearts, so that's one less person I need to impress. The rest of day 207 is spent harvesting some yams and beginning down the road of getting the goddess axe by chopping at the floorboards at my river house. Speaking of the river house, I'm up early on day 208, watering the crops in that field, then giving Saibara an eggplant. After dropping off that pumpkin at the town square and doing some sick moves in front of Lila's shop, I gave her a pumpkin that gets everyone's favorite flower lady up to 10 hearts as well. She didn't give me a discount on all the stuff I just bought though, so kind of rude if you ask me. That afternoon is spent collecting the rest of the ripe pumpkins, depositing the extras for some money, and then finally getting some wool from our sheep. 
I decided to start working on Autumn's training since she'll be the horse that will be running in the next race. And then it's over to Woody's place of business to purchase the level four house upgrade. I realized far too late that the gourmet was in town in the fall. And so I gifted him a topaz, which he hated. And then I spent the rest of the evening riding the horse at sunset on the beach and then doing more ax training. For the amount of manpower that Woody, Kurt, and Joe have, they work really fast, as my main house has been renovated in under 24 hours. The morning of day 209 is spent reorganizing the furniture inside the house. Then it's off to the barn, where Benny has some high quality, special milk for me. A festival day means no gift giving, so I have plenty of time to bang my ax against the floor. Then it's off to the town square to talk to a bunch of people that I already have 10 hearts with. I finish off the last day of autumn in the mines looking for rare ores for future tool upgrades. As is customary for the first day of winter and day 210, Basil leaves the village since there isn't enough green, if you know what I'm saying. Terry sent me a nice letter about the cold and the wild animals, but I got eggs to turn into mayonnaise. Now that I don't need to use this watering can, I head on over to Ty's workshop and get that upgrade going. And then it's off to take Autumn up to the mountains for some high altitude training. I learned that Kurt loves emeralds and bought the extra large pro kitchen from Woody. And the rest of the day is spent down in the newly accessible lake mine looking for expensive stones. I start day 211 in the barn feeding Sharpie the sheep. And it looks like Basil has sent a letter letting us know that he's found the greenery he's after. Martha gets herself some nice yarn and then it's off to the river house to clean up the leftover weeds from the fall crop. Since I have some leftover money from the house upgrade, I go ahead and purchase one forest fountains for 30,000 G. And here's an update on all the heart levels of everyone in the village. There's still a lot of gifts to give out as you can see. So the rest of the day is spent on floor 35 of the lake mine doing some emerald farming for gifts for Kurt. I'm back at the coop on the morning of day 212 feeding some birds. Then it's over to Tay's workshop to pick up my new watering can. While I'm here, I also decided to take a break from mining and get my hammer upgraded as well. I sold off some special yarn I've been stockpiling, then went over to Doug's Inn, where he taught me how to make cream salmon from his menu. The evening of day 212 begins the chopping. As I start my journey cutting down all the trees near the goddess cave to level up my ax. Lem hooks me up with some special milk the morning of day 213, and then I give Nina a topaz I found mining the other day, which I got her up to max affection with. Since I can't do any mining with my hammer in the shop, the rest of the day was spent continuing to chop down trees near the goddess cave. It's day 214 and I've got some eggs to deposit in the coop's shipping bin. Ty has finished work on the goddess hammer, so I get that picked up. Then it's over to Ronald's orchard where he teaches me how to make berry berry soda, adding another recipe to my list. There are still more trees to cut, so I finish the day doing more wood chopping. After giving Kevin a little snack, I finally reached max affection with our two house pets on day 215. It looks like Sharpie needs a little trim, and then it's over to Liz's store where we do a little bit of flirting before she finally gives me what I've been waiting for. The recipe for pumpkin pie. What did you think I was going to say? Get your head out of the gutter. Speaking of dimly lit locations, I can finally test out my new goddess hammer, which does quite a bit of damage. Then it's back to the tree chopping extravaganza. It's been a while since I did some cooking, so I'm in the kitchen the morning of day 216, making some boiled eggs. Then it's down to the mines to do a stamina gaining ritual around this sapphire. I get my mining hall sold off at the shipping bin, and then it's off to the town square for the chicken festival. I entered our first ever chicken, Ragu, into the competition, talked to a whole bunch of people, and then stood on the stage as the winner. This being my first win in the chicken competition rewarded me with my 96th music note, the cockadoodle doo note. I then spent the rest of the evening in the hospital as I didn't check my stamina levels while cutting down more trees. Lucky for me, Alex is my best friend, and Flowerbud Village has universal health care. For those curious, here is the current state of progress on my copper axe after all that tree cutting. I'm collecting eggs and getting out a whole bunch of gifts on day 217. I spent way too long on the first level of the mines looking for clay. Turns out 
you can only get Pontata roots and money this high up. But I did get some level progress on my hoe, so that's something. Speaking of progress, after giving Dan a ruby, I have progressed his friendship level to max. I then finish off the day by doing some more tilling in the mines and tree chopping in the mountains. I got a thinly veiled advertisement for Cafe Calloway from Katie the morning of day 218. Unfortunately for her, I finally learned you can't get clay on the first level, so I spent most of the day in the mines looking for clay and leveling up my hoe. Doug gets himself a delicious pepper, and I start working on my friendship with Jamie by giving them a special mayonnaise. To finish the day off, I gave Ray a moonstone, and then do even more woodcutting up in the mountains. Welcome to a new segment I like to call Wife Warning. At this point in the editing process, my wife came down to talk to me and said, quote, I'm just here to bother you. You can put this in your video, but the background has to be pink, end quote. So here it is. And we're back to our scheduled programming on day 219, getting some special milk from Benny. Tay loves his leafy greens, and for some reason, Meryl loves mayonnaise. I give that clay I was searching for yesterday to Saibara, then head up to the mountain to continue the deforestation. Guess who has two thumbs and didn't check his stamina again? This guy. Good thing I have thumbs, because I need them to milk lamb for some special milk on day 220. After that, one final emerald to Kurt lands him on my list of best friends now that he has 10 hearts. Then another bachelor gets added to my ever-expanding list as we give Ray a special egg. Two boys and one day. Just how I like it. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Speaking of things I like, I get my hoe on and start tilling a bunch of plots in the mines to continue leveling up my tools. Then it's back to the mountains to destroy our planet's largest asset. Evil really is hard work. Looks like Ragu left me a special egg the morning of day 221, and Autumn made her way back into the barn, so I got to take her back out. All those boiled eggs I made come in handy with Woody. He loves them so much that he just made the list. Fun fact, day 221 is Thanksgiving, so I take the cake Nina gave me and give it to her mom, and I spend most of the day running around getting cakes so I can sell them for 810 G a piece. Thanksgiving in Magical Melody is the definition of free money. If only I was making money from cutting down all these trees. Saibara gets himself some clay, and left parentheses, Lego all cap, right parentheses, gets himself a haircut on day 222. I decided that since I'm cutting down all those trees, I might as well purchase the land while I'm at it. So I put in the payment for two forest fountains, and I have successfully purchased every plot of land in the game. That purchase took a good chunk out of my finances, so I sell off some more cake to ease the blow. Then it's back up to chopping on my newly purchased land. I start off day 223 by handing out some mayonnaise. Hank gets the special kind, and Meryl gets the normal kind. With that gift, Meryl has been added to my list of villagers with 10 hearts of affection. Nothing weird about being best friends with a child. And after a grueling day of chopping, I finally finished my deforestation project to end this day. It looks like Meryl wants to be just like me when she grows up. She even sent me a letter on day 224 saying so. My axe had only a couple more swings until it was able to be leveled up, so I take out some frustration on a pine tree and there you go. It's ready for upgrade. It took me way too long to find a rare ore in the mines, but once I got one, I beelined it to Tay's shop and put in an order for the goddess axe. That afternoon, I gave some cheese to Joe and got a cutscene with Hank, where he teaches me how to make his favorite dish, grilled clams. Now that the axe is done being upgraded, it's time to really commit to digging, so I'm over at the mines doing a whole bunch of tilling with my golden hoe. Day 225 is super short. I take care of the birds in the coop, and then spend the entire day in the mines looking for rare ores for future upgrades, of which I only found one. I start day 226 by going over to Tay's, only for him to tell me that my axe isn't ready. So is off to the barn to get some special milk from Fidget Spin. Liz gets herself a nice pumpkin, Jamie gets some special milk, and I spend the entire rest of the day essentially leveling out a floor in the mines with my hammer and hoe. I kid you not, I spent 10 in-game hours just doing this to get my hoe leveled up. I mean, it was a success, so time well spent? I didn't read the weather report, so I'm stuck inside on day 227 as my animals starve in the barn as a blizzard goes through the village. At least tomorrow will be a nicer day. Well, nothing I can do now, so guess it's time to hit the hay. 
As I anticipated, my animals are pissed off the morning of day 228. I'm sorry, little chickens. The game wouldn't let me feed you. After taking care of the animals, it's back to the mines to do some mineral farming. To finish off the shipping list, I need two of almost every stone to turn into rings and brooches. So I spent the entire day in the mines collecting those, as well as getting some ores for gifts and future tool upgrades. My goddess axe is finally ready for pickup on day 229, and I decided to drop my hoe off while I'm there to get upgraded. Benny seems to be in a good mood, as she gives me some special milk. And could you imagine if Cactus got a lightsaber Saibar gets his daily clay, then it's off to the secret island to fish. I don't know how many fish I'm going to need to catch for the goddess rod upgrade, so I spent the entire evening fishing. Might as well start down that path. You'd think after day 227, I would start every day by checking the weather, but nope, I'm not that smart. Day 230 is again spent inside as there's another blizzard, so it's back to bed for this boy. It's day 231, and my goddess hoe has been finished. Without any tools to upgrade, it's time to get started on making jewelry for the shipping list, so I start with an emerald brooch. I decide to test out my new goddess hoe in the mines. It's pretty sweet since it does a 5x6 grid of tilling, but I did end up hitting Anne and Tim with it. After giving Saibara some good clay, he officially joined the best friend club now that he has max affection. Now that I'm slowly working down all the villagers, I need to focus on these wild animals. So I cuddle a cat, then confirm a rumor that you can catch tuna in the winter at the special island. This will be great to cook up into a tuna steak as a gift for Joe tomorrow. So I finish the day off by doing that. On day 232, it is reiterated to me that we have canonically had sex, as Gwen is in labor. As I arrive at the hospital, Martha forces me out of the delivery room until the child is born. As I'm pacing around, I hear the loud cry of a little baby, then hit a sick, jumping fist pump before rushing off to see my child. Gwen wants me to name the baby, so I gave him slash her the perfect name, Gamer. You might think that this is ultimately disrespectful to Gwen and the child, but they both seem pretty stoked with it. Speaking of stoked, I'm pretty stoked too, as I collect my 97th musical note, the baby is born note. Now that Gamer is home safe, I give him slash her a cuddle, and have officially met every possible character in the game. Still a long way to go to befriending them all though, so I start working on that by giving Joe a tuna steak, then finish the day off by making my way back out into the ocean to catch even more tuna for future Joe gifts. I start day 233 by playing some music with Gamer, then find my wife standing out in the cold asking to go stargazing with me instead of just asking me inside the warm house. Fidget Spin hooks me up with some special milk, then it's time to catch even more fish down at the secret island. Like a lot of fish. Like way too many fish. Like I'm going insane thinking about how many fish I need to catch to get the goddess rod. We end the day by meeting up with Gwen at the lookout and working on baby number two. That's a joke, you can't actually have two children, you can only have the one, I just thought it was funny. The morning of day 234 is spent feeding our large animals, taking Autumn for a nice little run, and giving Jamie some special milk. Over at the secret island, I spend some time fishing, then run back home to make some hot milk, which is a gift that Gamer can enjoy. I did some mining the morning of day 235, so here I am cashing in those stones. Then it's over to Ty's workshop to pick up that emerald brooch I commissioned which instantly gets dumped into the shipping bin. That afternoon, I made my way down to level 50 of the lake mine, and then did some quick diamond farming, and finished the day by depositing my treasure. I picked right back up in the chicken coop on day 236, where I noticed that four out of the five birds I have laid a special egg, so that's a pretty neat coincidence. Hank got himself some special mayonnaise, then it's off to Lila's to buy up some accessories, which I instantly sell off for my shipping list. I went ahead and scrolled through the other section of my shipping list so that you can all see how many items I still need to ship. It's quite a lot. Since Lila doesn't sell certain rings or brooches, I spent the rest of the day in the mines finding the stones I would need and organizing them in my shelf. I start day 237 in the barn making some cheese. Then I'm back in Tay's workshop to start making some diamond accessories. I give Joe his favorite gift, a tuna steak, then is back in the lake mine searching for rare ores, which is Ty's favorite gift. I cuddled a monkey, then I went up to the goddess cave to get a nice little stamina refill, 
before going all the way down to floor 100 and fishing up a JAMA squid. There's almost nothing interesting that happens on day 238. I spent the entirety of the day in the mines getting diamonds and other stones and running over to my house to sell them and just repeating that process. All that mining takes it out of you, so I called it an early day, especially since I was up so late last night catching that JAMA squid. Speaking of early days, the harvest sprites are at my door early on day 239 as they take on the task of inviting Gwen to watch the sunrise with me tonight. I gave Gamer their daily hot milk, then spend the final day of winter in the lake mine doing some diamond farming and selling before heading over to the town square to meet up with Gwen. We walk down to the observation deck and watch as winter turns to spring. I start day 240, the first day of year three, with the customary cutscene of Basil returning to the village. Now that I have the goddess hoe and watering can, I spent a large part of this first day reorganizing my crop fields in the most efficient pattern for our upgraded tools. I begin that process by clearing the old squares with a rock. Because the festival from yesterday kept me up so late, I'm up in the mountains, collecting and eating herbs to stay awake. Then it's finally time to take care of the animals. The evening is spent clearing up the river house plots and utilizing my goddess hoe for the first time. There's only so much energy to go around, so I finally get to watering and sowing seeds the morning of day 241. The wells at the big house are in the way of the optimal planting pattern, so I get Woody to demolish both of those, and while I'm here, decide to upgrade my house to the final level for 50,000 G. Now I can finally utilize my goddess hoe at the main farm, where I spend the entire evening tilling land and using the rocks to create the perfect squares for my goddess watering can tomorrow. The construction bros finished my house upgrade on day 242, so of course I have to do some rearranging that morning. Basil wrote me a letter about all the animals waking up for the spring. It's kind of like a really bad haiku. I take that morning to spread some fertilizer on these newly tilled squares, sow some spring seeds, and get those watered before hitting up Lila's shop, who has some new items for me to purchase. These aren't all the bombs, but I buy all that I can get and get those sold off for the shipping list. That afternoon, I head down to Woody's to get a replacement fountain at the main field and then give Joe with the final tuna steak needed to get our bandana brother to max affection. Since I need grapes and apples to finish off the crop shipping list, I spend the evening of this day planting some saplings at the orchard. Day 243 begins with a letter from Saibara talking about buds and how much joy he feels from them. If you ask me, these villagers are not very subtle with their affection for recreational drugs. We jokes aside, I get my plants watered and head on down to Tay's place of business to collect my diamond brooch and get him started on a diamond ring. I give our pal Sharpie a haircut and get the wool turned into some yarn and finish off the day by instantly gifting it to Martha. Another favorite gift has been granted, leaving another villager at 10 hearts. The goddess watering can really does make farming easy. So day 244 begins in earnest in the chicken coop feeding my birds. I give Tay some special milk on a whim and it turns out he loves the stuff so much that he is now at max affection with all those other villagers. And he's not the only one. I gave Basil a pontata root and that's two new best friends added to the list. An exciting day of friendship confirmation is capped off by the collecting of turnips at the river house. I've got another letter in the mailbox on day 245. This time it's Meryl letting me know how much she loves spring. It's a good thing you're not a farmer, Meryl, because you definitely couldn't water all these plants like I can. I give Hank one of those turnips I harvested, and I get some strawberries sowed in their place before hitting up Tay's workshop to collect my diamond ring and get him started on a ruby brooch. You'd think I'd finally give Gwen this diamond ring, but you're wrong. I need to sell it for the shipped item list. That's much more important. I finish off the day by collecting some very berries and flowers in the mountains, the latter of which gets tossed into the mixing pot, which makes an orange bomb. The first thing I do on day 246 is get that orange bomb thrown into the shipping bin, then it's off to giving Terry one of his favorite gifts, a mushroom. Since tomorrow is the egg festival, I grab one egg, and feed my birds, then drop off that egg in the town square collection bin. Eggs seem to be a theme today, as I gift one to Ronald, and then back up to the mountains collecting some honey that I need for a recipe. That recipe also calls for a pontata root, so 
I hit up the mines for one of those, and then get to mixing in the kitchen, where I combine a whole bunch of stuff to make a Bravo drink. And then I combine a whole nother bunch of stuff to make a potion. Both these beverages get immediately sold to make more progress on the shipping list, which is slowly but surely coming together. I'm back doing some water spins the morning of day 247. I make sure my large animals are well fed, then it's off to the mountains to study the blade until I have only the tiniest sliver of stamina left. Nothing is more energizing than the egg festival though. So I talk to a whole bunch of people until the mayor decides to end it. And then I spend the remainder of the day doing more slashing and whacking of invisible objects. Day 248 begins by selling all these normal eggs in the chicken coop, giving Jamie some more milk, and then harvesting my first crop of potatoes, strawberries, and breadfruits. Michael's favorite gift is potatoes, so I give him one of those, and then I get a two-for-one duck and sparrow cuddling session. I cap off the day by collecting a whole bunch of potatoes that will serve as more gifts for Michael in the days to come. Plants get wet on day 249, but more importantly, it's over to Tay's workshop to pick up the ruby brooch and then get him started on a ruby ring. Like all the other accessories, the brooch gets instantly sold to the highest bidder, and then it's off to take care of the animals. It's high time I got all the furniture possible in the game, so I head over to Woody's to purchase the remaining extra large kitchens. Dia gets herself some blueberry jam, and I get myself some rabbit cuddles. In return for the cuddles, I give the rabbit a delicious weed before I finish the day off by doing some more blade training near the goddess cave. The morning of day 250, I'm watering crops and collecting a breadfruit to give to Liz. Can't leave out my boy Hank, and Sharpie is getting a little haircut for some special wool. By the way, I've been riding my horse Autumn the entire time I've been traveling, so her training ranks should be getting pretty high by now. I spend the remainder of the day collecting some strawberries, turning them around for some profit, then doing some more slashing until I can't slash no more. I start day 251 in the coop selling some eggs and feeding some chickens. Then it's off to Tay's workshop to collect my ruby ring and then start on the coral accessories. That's right, there's coral accessories. That ruby ring gets deposited and then I found a squirrel to pet and feed. There's still a lot of work to be done in befriending these animals, so I think it's time I focused a little more on them since I'm close to befriending all the villagers. Speaking of befriending villagers, Ronald gets the final breadfruit give needed to reach max friendship. And then I found a rabbit who needs some pets. I've done enough sickle training to purchase the silver upgrade at the junk shop, and I spent the remainder of the day doing some fishing. I even pulled up a, quote, kingfish, end quote, in the form of a right boot. A hungry little kitten got a fish to start day 252, and then I ran into a cutscene with Michael at the junk shop where he teaches me how to make the Bravo drink recipe. I guess there's no reason for him to know that I've already made it, but you know, it's the thought that counts. I completely forgot to water the crops, so I get that done, then head down to the coop to collect my daily eggs. I spent that evening by giving a rabbit a weed, knocking some more experience into the fission rod, then doing some more sickle training. God, you really do a lot of watering in farming games, huh? If you're like me, you spend a lot of time gifting, too. I finally got the golden fishing rod, but the tough part is yet to come. It took 253 days, but after giving Dia another blueberry jam, I've gotten all of the bachelorettes to 10 hearts. It's off to Tay's workshop to collect my coral brooch and get the coral ring started. The coral brooch gets sold away, and I spend the remainder of this day collecting a whole bunch of fruit, selling it off, and trying to cut down my fence to no avail. Gamer gets some hot milk and a hug from me on day 254. My cabbages are finally ready for harvest, so it's time to start working on Terry's friendship in earnest. I have so many cabbages and not a lot of room in my backpack, so I harvest as many as possible and then spend the remainder of the day cutting air. I start day 255 by picking up a sparrow, then heading down to Liz's store to purchase some more seeds. Lem has got some special milk for me, then I'm back replanting some cabbages in the river field. Strawberries are the best crop to sell in the spring, so I get those put in the collection bin. Then it's off to the mountain to do some more altitude training with Autumn, since the spring horse race is tomorrow. I'm hugging a cat to start day 256. Then it's time to do more training around the town square, trying to get Autumn as many stars as we can before the race. We get her registered for the Mount Moon Cup, 
where Stroganoff, Cliffguard, and Shun will be our opponents. Now that Autumn is at a respectable training level, these races really are a piece of cake. I mean, look how easy it is to beat these losers. My wife's a part of them, but, you know, it's all about competition, baby. I celebrate my victory, and then it's back to cutting my fence. It's finally time for all you Jamie lovers out there. The big moment, the final gift of special milk, gets Jamie up to 10 hearts on day 257. Thus, I have reached max affection with every single marriageable villager, a monumental achievement, if I do say so myself. My coral ring is ready for pickup from Taze, so I get him started on the Emerald series and deposit that ring before giving Cactus a haircut and a rabbit a weed. Even though Autumn just won the horse race yesterday, she still isn't at 10 stars, so I take her on a trot and I finally have the perfect horse. It wouldn't be 100% if Kuze wasn't also at 10 stars, so I took him outside and started working on his training levels to finish off the day. A nice rainy day 258 means we get to start with gifts. Michael gets a potato and Hank gets a turnip, which brings our favorite animal handler up to 10 hearts. With Hank being completed, I can collect all these turnips and sell them, so that's nice. A lot of crops no longer have purpose since I have enough money and I don't really need them for gifts, so I get them chopped down, and then provide Gamer with some warm milk before hitting the sack. I start day 259 by giving a duck a fish, and then it's over to give Terry his daily cabbage. All my hard work has paid off, and I can purchase the golden sickle. Then it's over to Taze to pick up my emerald ring and get started on the amethyst accessories. That emerald ring gets deposited, and then I found Terry in the cave. He told me that if something were to happen to him, to take care of his granddaughter Eve. I don't know what could possibly happen to Terry in this village. I mean, he, I don't think he knows like the mafiosos or anything. Maybe he's worried about getting mauled by like a rabies infected raccoon. I don't know. Anyways, I came to the mine for a reason. And that was to get rare ore for a future tool upgrade. Looks like we have a new duck friend on day 260. Speaking of animal friends, Lamb has some special milk for us and then it's off to the junk shop to give Michael a potato. I hate to cut down these plants, but my time is really better spent doing other things. So I get the strawberries collected and scythe down the leftovers. Over at the secret island, I'm fishing up some gifts for our dolphin friend, and then it's time to hit the hay. It's a, it's a short day, what can I say? That rhymed. Day 261 begins as I say hello to all the barn animals. I have some more work for Tay as I get him started on the Moonstone accessories. Liz gets one of the strawberries I harvested yesterday and I finally sell off some special mayonnaise that I was hoarding for Hank. I spent almost the entire day fishing by my main house and I only stopped to give a rabbit a weed and go to the mountains and find a flower to deposit it in the town square shipping bin so I could see the flower festival tomorrow. That morning I found out that Gamer reached the second and final stage of childhood so now I can read to them and they can run around and be even more annoying than they already were. That afternoon, I spent some time harvesting some ripe potatoes, selling off some extra crops and milking lem for that sweet, sweet special produce. While I'm waiting for the flower festival, I get my daily sickle swings in and then I pop on down by the town square and partake in the festivities. All that slashing really takes it out of you. So I hit up the goddess for a stamina increase and I cap off the evening by fishing up a gift for the cat and doing more air slashing. It's time to finish off the Moonstone series on day 263 as I collect the ring and get started on the brooch. I make sure all my chickens are fed, loved, and their produce deposited before giving Terry a cabbage. I'm really worried about not getting an apple or a grape for the shipping list, so I purchase some fertilizer, give a duck a fish, and then start chopping down the mora trees by the big house. This area is going to become orchard number two. Day 264 begins in the barn, keeping all of our large animals well fed, and then it's over to the junk shop to give Michael his daily potato. Up at the mountains, I'm collecting some herbs and flowers, and then I learned that birds do not like fish in this game. Do not try to give birds fish. They're not a fan. To finish out the day, I made some green yarn, and he got in some more sickle swings in my entertainment room. I start day 265 by giving a rabbit a snack, 
then going over to Tay's shop to pick up that moonstone brooch that I ordered. I get Tay started down the aquamarine path, and then I get that accessory dropped in the bin. Liz gets herself a strawberry, and Gamer needs his nutrients. And I spend the evening doing some yard maintenance in the orchard, then do even more practice swings in what I'm calling the dojo. It's like an entertainment room with a TV, but since I've got this sickle out, I'm just, I'm cutting shit. It's, it's a dojo. For those of you who are worried about the chickens and the large animals, there's no need. There's no need to worry. I may not show it every day, but I do indeed feed, milk, take care of every animal every day. And of course, day 266 is no different. That afternoon, I spent some time fishing down at the Delta and gave my fresh catch of the day to the dolphin at the pier before giving an upset gamer some hot milk. The rest of the day is spent doing some altitude training with Kuze, then chopping more weeds on my recently deforested land. I had to show off this moment on day 267, the first and only time I ever got three special milks in a row from Benny, Fidget Spin, and Lem. These will come in handy when the gourmet's in town in the fall. Since today is the cow festival, I don't have any gifts to give out, so I spent the afternoon doing some air cutting, getting a stamina boost, and then doing even more air cutting until my sickle reached max experience. Now all that's left is the fishing rod, so I do some fishing at the river before heading out to the town square to partake in the cow festival. I entered Benny into the judging this year, and of course, I took home the gold, and I finished the day by giving a monkey a berry. I start off day 268 by giving Terry some cabbage, and then it's off to the workshop to pick up my ring and get Tay started on the goddess sickle. After that, I sped through taking care of the birds and selling their eggs, and then it's time to give out gifts. A cuckoo gets a hug, Doug gets some special cheese, and Kuze gets upset when I try to give this duck a fish. I end the day by giving the monkey a snack and a cuddle, and then do some fishing with Joe down by the river. Day 269 and the final day of spring is what I'll call feeding day. I feed a chicken some bird feed, I feed some hay to a horse, the dolphin gets a fish, Gamer gets some hot milk, and the cat also gets a fish, which makes him slash her the first wild animal with max affection. I finish off feeding day by doing some fishing at the waterfall as I work to get more experience into the fishing rod. There's no other way to start day 270, the first day of summer. This includes doing some tilling, weeding, using a rock to fix up the squares and make them all pretty, and finally, sowing seeds and getting them all watered. I definitely need some more seeds, so I hit up with a store to purchase those, then it's over to the workshop to collect my goddess sickle from Tay. Here it is in all its 5x5 five five cutting glory. I get Tay started on making those topaz accessories, and then run over to the village entrance where everyone's favorite weather girl, Nami, is back in town. I pet a rabbit and give them a snack before heading up to the mountains to collect some herbs. I've been patiently waiting for the summer to utilize these red herbs to make some recipes, starting with the stamina drink, which instantly gets sold away. I start day 271 with what I like to call water twirlies, then give left parentheses Lego all cap right parentheses a haircut, and Doug finally gets the last gift he needed of regular milk to reach max affection. I'm back in the mountains collecting some honey, and then I'm taking that yarn from the sheep combined with a red herb to make some red yarn. I then spent the rest of the evening at the secret island fishing up some tuna. What I like to call the mass villager exodus begins on day 272 as Ray decides to go on a fishing expedition and leave the village. Since today is a festival day and there's no villagers around to give gifts to, I can spend the day collecting oranges in orchard number two and orchard number one before doing a whole bunch of fishing. That afternoon, it's finally time to take back my crown as the best swimmer in the village. Even though Ray left this morning, he seemed more than happy to come back and compete, but none of these land lovers are gonna match me in the water. I thought it was rude to block Kurt, so I ended the race by getting out of his way as a sign of good sportsmanship. But of course, your boy got the dub at the end of the day. Don't even worry. Gwen woke me up on day 273 talking about come home early tonight. Girl, I just woke up. You gotta give a man a second to get his bearings before you get all in his ear about what he needs to do. Especially me, I'm a farmer. I got a whole bunch of stuff to do. But the mass exodus continues as Lila decides it's time to skedaddle. 
Then I get a couple letters from Dan and Ray talking about how cool dolphins are and how great fishing is and I should totally do more fishing. Don't worry, Ray, I will. But before I do the fishing, I need to make sure my birds are taken care of and I need to collect my topaz ring from Tay. I get him started on the topaz brooch, get that ring sold away, and my onions are finally ready for harvest. So I get those collected for future Michael gifts. Now I can finally do the fishing that Ray requested of me. Like Gwen said, I made sure to come home early and I was greeted with a quiz. Of course, I'm a genius, so I totally remembered that it was our anniversary. My correct answer is rewarded with a feast cooked by Gwen. I really didn't get any like food items or anything, but you know, again, it's the thought that counts. Carl makes it three days in a row with someone leaving the village to start day 274. So I make sure to sell all the eggs in the coop so that he can quickly make his way back. That afternoon, after giving a fish to the dolphin, I got the weirdest glitch I've ever seen in this game. It didn't let me start any text prompts like trying to go over to the secret island. I couldn't go inside my house or any other locations in town. I could pick up the monkey and pick up and take out items using the sea stick, but it wouldn't even let me go to the sunny lake or inside the coop or my barn. Luckily, I was able to talk to the dolphin again and it fixed it. My UI came back up, but I lost a whole day to this really crazy glitch. Just as Kara leaves, his assistant, Katie, decides to call it quits on day 275. I know I need to sell eggs and milk to get you back in town, Carl. I'm working on it. You don't need to send me a letter. Speaking of work, Tay finished my topaz brooch, and now I have this sapphire accessories to get him to start on. I get that topaz brooch sold away, then give Sky the chicken some food and a hug, which makes my entire group of animals finally at full hearts. Another large step taken towards the 100%. I spent the rest of the day training Kuze in the mountains, and collecting some forgeables before doing some late night XP fishing farming. The TV informed me that day 276 is the Star Festival, so Gwen decided to leave the comfort of our own home to ask me to float a bamboo boat down the river this evening. I guess Carl even got Katie to write me letters about selling eggs and milk now. Well, hopefully this milk that I just got and sold will get them to come back into town. I spend the afternoon fishing down at the secret island and then cap off this festival day by floating a boat down a river with Gwen. Basil decides that he's had enough and leaves the village on day 277. But I don't have time for his nonsense since my sapphire ring is finally ready. And I have another sapphire accessory that Tay needs to get started on. I pick up a monkey and then sell off a bunch of fish in an attempt to get Ray back into town and then I spend the afternoon in the mountains planting some trees on public land so people will like me and come back to town again. And then spend the entire rest of the day fishing to get more XP. Another day, and it's another villager deciding to leave. On day 278, it's Lewis. It's a good thing I checked the weather channel today since there's going to be a typhoon coming tomorrow. So I make the proper preparations in the coop and in the barn. After giving Michael an onion, I can now add him to my list of best friends. 10 out of 10 hearts for the junk shop facilitator. I still have a little while to go with Nami though. I cap off this day by harvesting some ripe tomatoes from the main house farm. Unfortunately, I have to stay inside all of day 279 as a typhoon rolls through town. I read a story to Gamer and then check the TV for tomorrow's weather report and to look out for future festivals. Tim decides to follow Lewis out of the village on day 280 and I also get a letter from the suspender wearing man about how nice it would be if I sold more ores. That typhoon did quite a number on my crop fields, as you can see. But the most important thing to do right now is to pick up that sapphire brooch from Taze, which after I get it sold, finishes off all of the accessories in the shipping list. I take some time in the afternoon to hug the little bird in the big monkey before fishing for the entire day and selling off my haul that evening. You can add another villager to the list of turncoats as Meryl decides to leave on day 281. Seems like Tim is getting more than he asked for as he's really busy at his relative's house. But I'm busy giving out gifts and picking up monkeys, so who's the real loser here? By the way, monkeys love honey for some reason. I decided to take some time that afternoon to clean up the leftover tilled spaces from last year's truffle farming. And then I'm back in the kitchen, finishing off the medicine items by making some caffeine and getting that sold away. 
All that fishing has finally brought Ray back to the valley on day 282. Sharpie is in dire need of a haircut, and I need more seeds to replenish my fields from the typhoon the other day. I got my lazy butt in gear and spent a good amount of the day retilling, planting, and watering the crop field near the big house. I guess Lila was stalking Ray as she has finally arrived back in town on day 283. I do some more water twirlies, then give Terry the final gift he needed to reach 10 out of 10 hearts, with everyone's favorite nature lover now on the list. Left parentheses, Lego, all cap, right parentheses, gets himself a shear, Liz gets herself some corn, and I spend the afternoon fishing. I want to get Meryl back in town, so I collect all the oranges over by Tay's workshop and then go get those sold away. And after doing some riding around town with Kuze, I stopped to find that Kuze has now been fully trained. I finish off this exciting day by mining for moonstones and taking one back to deposit in the town square box for tomorrow's festival. Another turncoat has revealed themselves as Dia leaves the village on day 284. This day is super short since all I really do is take care of the chickens and feed a fussing gamer before watching the Firefly Festival down at the beach. Speaking of short days, I got back to back since I really should have checked the weather channel yesterday as another typhoon hits the village on day 285. So I guess it's back to bed for me. All that egg and milk selling has finally brought Carl back to the village on day 286. But I have some upset animals to tend to since I didn't get to feed them yesterday because of the typhoon. Another typhoon means the crop fields are destroyed, so I have to take even more time out of my day to repair all this debris. Then it's off to Liz's store to buy more seeds and replace the ones that were taken away from me. I spent some time in the afternoon at the Secret Island getting some fishing XP and then spending the evening re-sowing all those seeds I just bought. I put a lid on this day by watching TV to make sure that there's not another disaster storm coming my way. Katie and Carl are attached at the hip, so there's no surprise to me when she's back on my doorstep the morning of day 287. The early hours of the day are spent feeding chickens and harvesting some ripe tomatoes so that best girl, aka Nami, can finally have max affection, baby. Everything is now right in the world. It's a two-for-one special today as Liz becomes the final permanent villager to reach max affection. Another massive milestone in getting 100%. Fishing XP is super slow. I bet you could figure that out by now. So I spend the rest of the day catching tuna on the secret island and getting it sold off. I guess I shipped enough crops or herbs or whatever for basil to come back into town on day 288. I spent the morning watering crops, doing my water twirlies, and taking care of my animals like every farmer should. Then it's time to get fishing to make some recipes. Since yesterday was a rainy day, I'm able to catch some kingfish. The squid prints can be found at the secret island, and the Hudson can be found at the Sunny Lake. I start by chopping up the Hudson into some sashimi and then put the squid prints in the oven and make some nice squid teriyaki. There's still two more recipes with these fish, so I go ahead and catch one more each and start by throwing the Hudson into the bonfire to make a salted Hudson and then end the day by throwing the squid in to the bonfire to make some broiled nice squid. Day 289 is another short day. I'm in the mines looking for ores and stones to get Tim and Lewis back into the village, and then it's off to see the frog down at the lake. He isn't listed as a wild animal in the game, but he still deserves pets. The day is finished off by doing nothing but fishing to get XP needed for that goddess rod upgrade. All that mining yesterday did the trick on day 290 as Tim has reappeared in town. I do some water twirlies and some chicken feeding at the coop before spending the entire rest of the day fishing again. I fished so much, I even needed a stamina boost. I finish off the day by introducing myself to the raccoon that evening, since I completely forgot that he exists. All those oranges that I've sold has finally brought Meryl back to town on 291, but the most important thing today is that it's raining, so I can spend my entire morning taking care of the chickens and large animals. Then I went farming for some fishing XP. From my quick cuts and editing in this video, you really haven't seen how much fishing I do. Let me tell you now that this large sped up chunk of fishing that you're seeing right now barely puts a dent in that XP meter for the fishing rod. So you can understand how much fishing you actually have to do to get the goddess rod. When it came to the ax and the sickle and the hoe and everything, you could just hit X as many times and it counted towards the meter. 
but with fishing you actually need to catch a fish so this entire day is spent just fishing i'm woken up on day 292 in an absolute state for gamers checkup down at the hospital the little ankle biter learned to walk so i hit another sick jumping fist pump and got rewarded with a musical note number 98 the you can walk note back at home i learned the firework festival is tomorrow so I get into the field to water the crops and get some special milk from Benny. That afternoon, I'm down in the mines, smashing ores looking for moonstones to sell for Lewis, selling off my findings, and then I finish the day by giving the raccoon some honey. A festival on day 293 means I spend a lot of the morning taking care of Gamer, because his mother has got some setting up to do at the festival, I guess. After giving the duck some fish, I finally have another animal friend besides the cat. Both Fidget Spin and Benny were kind enough to give me some special milk today, and I spent the remainder of the day catching some fish at the lake. Another year of fireworks means another random girl to watch them with. I guess Nina pulled the long straw this year, so I finished the day by watching the fireworks with her. There isn't much to show off on day 294, as I spent all day in the mines looking for Moonstone to get Lewis back in town. And with what's left of the day, I spent collecting some ripe tomatoes. The morning of day 295... A shiny little monkey guy is out in front of my door, and he looks like a very cute and polite gentleman. Today, I finally used the windmill as it was intended to make some chicken food with some corn. And then it's off to farm for more fishing XP at the waterfall. The day is capped off by cuddling a raccoon and giving him a fish as a gift. I begin with a little bird friend on day 296 who also gets a little treat to take him all the way up to 10 hearts. That makes three animal friends. Once again, Lewis still isn't in town, so I spend a whole lot of time in the mines looking for ores and moonstones to sell, and then I finish the day by grinding out more fishing XP. My hard work has borne fruit on day 297, as Lewis has finally returned to the village. And that's the really only monumental thing that happens. I don't have to mine anymore, so I can spend the entire day fishing again. We pick up on day 298, doing the only thing that is worth showing. Fishing. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. It's the sheep festival. Today's the sheep festival. I decided to enter Sharpie as the farm's representative, and he ended up winning the whole damn thing, granting me the 99th musical note. The ba note. I finish off this day by, you guessed it, it's for real this time, fishing. I really got to grind that XP. This is really like the most RuneScape-esque grinding thing you have to do in this game just fish 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 it's honestly hysterical in hindsight speaking of fishing day 299 was a mad dash i was super close to getting all the xp needed to get the goddess rod but i didn't have enough days to wait for tay to make it so the junk shop was the only option i fished until the absolute last second the junk shop was open and luckily for me I had enough XP to purchase the Goddess Rod for 48,000 G. And I have finally acquired all six Goddess level tools, and I don't have to fish anymore. Thank goodness. On day 300, I take care of all the birds in the coop, feed all the large animals in the barn, and then arrive at the Goddess Cave, where Jamie is waiting with the Harvest Goddess. Jamie complains about being inferior to me, and even goes as far to call me an ordinary farmer. Jamie then goes through all the stages of grief until the goddess enlightens her about how important it is to care about others, know that others care for you, and realize we're not alone in this world. Jamie eventually comes to terms with the fact that I am indeed the superior farmer, and their final acceptance releases the 100th and final musical note, the meek heart note. This is a little tangent, but Jamie is finally confirmed as being a boy in the description of this note, so yeah, fun fact. Jamie's a dude. The goddess takes this final note, talks to Jamie some more about how she'll always be here to protect the people of the valley, then goes on to say some very poignant words. Remember to be thankful. Always care about one another. Learn to trust your friends. Don't be afraid to love. There is a way to live happily ever after. But I can't stop there. I won't let you have the satisfaction of saying, um, actually, you did 100% the game since the Gorbe, your child, 
the wild animals, they're not at max hearts. And the shipping list and recipe list aren't completed. So on day 301, I put a blue mist flower into the mixing pot to make a blue bomb. I put three orange herbs into the mixing pot to make an orange bomb and collected and shipped an apple and grape along with those bombs to complete the shipped items list. I successfully fed and pet the rabbit the evening of day 303 to get him up to 10 hearts. And then it's on to day 304, where I gave our island taxi dolphin friend a fish and a wave, which got him up to 10 hearts as well. The day after that, a singular weed given to the squirrel got me to max friendship with that little guy. And I have to skip all the way to day 318, where I pet and feed the monkey for the final time to get 10 hearts with him. On day 330, I'm fishing down at level 100 in the mines to get a Jamma Squid, which subsequently gets tossed into a bonfire to reveal the broiled Jamma Squid recipe. After reading a book to Gamer on day 332, our little boy slash girl slash whatever they want to be now loves us enough to have 10 hearts. Then it's back to floor 100 in the lake mine on day 335. This Jamma Squid gets thrown into the oven to discover the Jamma Squid Teriyaki recipe completely revealing every single dish and recipe in the game. On day 371, we feed and hold the cuckoo bird outside the lake for the last time, as this little dude is now up to 10 hearts. And then six days later, it's almost midnight down at the same lake as I feed and pet my little raccoon buddy, leaving only the weasel left to get up to 10 hearts. It took 392 days, but a gift of special cheese to the gourmet sees him reach max friendship, finishing off befriending every single villager in the game. And then we finally cap it off on day 442, as I give my final gift and a pet to the little weasel boy, successfully getting him to 10 hearts, finishing befriending every single wild animal. Thank you so much for watching my video. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone who made it this far and watched the series from day zero all the way to day 442. I apologize for the wait on this last part, but I got super burnt out after 200 days, so I wanted to wait to play it again until I really wanted to finish it. And I'm glad I did, because this video would have been hot garbage if I continued playing in that headspace. I started this series because I never really got Magical Melody, if that makes sense. But now I am a firm believer that this game really has everything. And more importantly, a remake with some quality of life improvements, a fresh coat of paint, and some small tweaks and changes would arguably be one of the greatest entries into the Harvest Moon slash Story of Seasons franchise. Once again, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. If you want to support me, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel and enable notifications, as well as hitting that like button. It really means a lot. If you want to watch me play live or get more involved in the community, make sure to follow me on Twitch and Twitter and join my personal Discord channel. There are a lot of cool dudes, dudettes, and everything in between over there, and I'm sure they'd love to have you be a part of all the goofy conversations. Those links will be in the description. And for the third and final time, thanks so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you again in the next video.